Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, this is Scrapman, bringing you another episode of Scrap Mechanic. And today, we are doing another episode of Stupid Vehicles in Scrap Mechanic. If this is your first time to Stupid Vehicles, basically a stupid vehicle is something that gets you around to where you might want to go, but in not the most efficient way. And sometimes in a very silly way, but usually based around some kind of interesting concept. So it's interesting, it's interesting to build and interesting to see. So be sure to check out all the other Stupid Vehicles videos if you haven't seen those yet. There will be a link down in the description to the full playlist. These two vehicles are brand new Stupid Vehicles. And as I've been doing lately, I want to give you guys a chance to guess what they do first. So we're going to start off, this is number one on the left over here. I'm going to give you a nice walk around of it. I feel like this one's a little bit easier to guess. But I'm gonna give you a nice walk around, and before you watch the rest of the video, I want you to comment down below what you think number one does. How does it get around? I'll even get in the seat here. And show you a little bit of what it looks like, and I'll take out my connection tool. There you go. So take your guesses, leave a comment down below. How do you think of this thing gets around? Okay, and we have number two over here, and this one, I think, is actually a lot more interesting, and I'm pretty proud of this one. It was much more difficult to build, and I was surprised that it actually, it, it's okay, it, it works pretty decently. But, uh, what do you guys think? How do you think this works? Now, I'm gonna admit that you're probably not gonna get it based off of what you see right now, so what I'm gonna do is give you some different views, because there's some stuff going on inside here as well. As you can see, there is no seat. But this is the main area. This is the driving area, in other words. We got some switches, we got some buttons here. We got something interesting down below me with this glass here. You can see we got glass all around us. We got a bunch of sensors. We got this thing in the back here. I'll take out my connection tool. So you can see this one is definitely a lot more complex than that thing. Lot more complex. Lot, lot more stuff going on here. So take your guesses, leave a comment, this is vehicle number two. What do you think vehicle number two does? How does it get around? Now keep in mind, they might have special things for turning, forward, reverse, things like that. So if, if you want to, feel free to include those details as well. Alright, did you do it yet? Did you comment? Did you, did you take your guess? Alright, here we go. We're gonna start off with vehicle number one. Now, many of you probably guessed, uh, that this thing is a clapping vehicle. Uh, these are supposed to be little hands that actually clap in front of the vehicle. And that's how it goes. Do you see sensors on, on the middle fingers there? Once those sensors come together, it triggers the thrusters. And this is how the vehicle gets around. Now, this is WASD controlled. Um, all I'm doing is pressing W to go forward, and this triggers the controller which will clap the hands, and then whenever the hands come together, it triggers the thrusters. Now this thing is not very well balanced, for sure, and also, <laughs> you do not want to take- the oh boy, that's not good. You do not want to take this thing through any dense forest. Uh, now what I can do, though, is press number one. Maybe. And yeah, there we go, now we kind of turn around. Now the unfortunate thing about this is, it is not- uh, in order to have the hands come together, I had to have it be an even width. That way those two hands would be able to touch each other. Uh-oh. And that happens too if you stop at the wrong point. So, but because of that, when I turn myself around, you can see that I'm actually off-center from my wheelbase. And that's because there's no center point when your vehicle has an even width. So that's the only thing that annoys me about it, is it doesn't have a center base when I turn myself around. But it is capable of turning around, so that's a good thing and it still works in either direction. It's just not symmetrical. But, uh, here, let's, uh, turn myself back around over here. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Yeah, so the hard- <laughs> oh no. The hard part is, um, in order to stop going, you actually- uh-oh. That's not supposed to happen. Our hands- our hands have penetrated each other. <laughs> There's nothing I can do about that. So that happens occasionally if you, uh, if you stop and go too much. For some reason the controllers change in strength and they end up going through each other from, from that mechanism stopping and then resuming for whatever reason. But the tough part is actually stopping in the first place because you have to make sure that you stop after the hands have reached their open, their maximum open, opening point. Otherwise, if you... Well, there it goes again. So I'm gonna say, otherwise, if you stop too soon, it's gonna automatically go back to its closed position, and then you're just gonna keep going, and you're just gonna be out of control, and nobody wants that. 
The other warning is um, avoid highly dense wooded areas. You definitely want to keep to the more open areas because as this thing goes through these more dense areas like this over here, it becomes increasingly harder to avoid um, catching on trees and stuff because of how wide these arms are. Just like that. Yep. And then once you do that, you're really not in some good shape. Because now, what happens if I just want to turn around? If I want to try to turn around... <laughs> it doesn't work. This is not... This is what makes it a stupid vehicle. I mean, it, it'll get you somewhere if you really, really need it to, but um, you're gonna have some troubles along the way up, oh, and now it's... Now it's glitched again. So I think this is definitely one of the stupider vehicles I've made, and this is called the Clapper Car. So look for that in the workshop if you want to do it. Clapper Car. So that is vehicle number one, ladies and gentlemen, and by a show of likes, how many of you actually guessed correctly? Hit that like button if you got it right. Okay, up next is this one. Are your comments in for vehicle number two? This thing is much more unique and complicated and much more difficult, I think, to figure out how it goes. The cool thing about this is this idea actually came from someone in the Discord. Uh, Superman227 gave me this idea, so shout out to you, man. Thanks for this idea. And if you don't know what it is yet, I'm going to give you a hint. The name of this vehicle is the Nom Car. N-O-M-C-A-R, the NOM car. And the reason why it's called the NOM car is because in order to make this thing go, you have to feed it blocks. So that was the idea, that was the challenge somebody gave me, was make a car that goes by feeding it blocks. So I recommend using any of just the normal blocks, although I haven't really tried much else. So here's how it works, is uh, these little green pipes here, these are your attachment points. So you can either go like this, drop one block in, you can see that it goes down the conveyor belt, and we move forward just a little bit. Here, I'll face forward this time. There it goes. Yep, and then it stops us. Now, one block tends to go a lot, uh, a lot quicker, meaning that it you go and stop really, really quick, but if you do something like this, it tends to give you a little bit more distance. And that's because you can see it goes down much slower if I drop it in here. You can see because it lays flat, it actually goes much slower than if you were to- uh oh. This is a problem. This is one of the problems with this particular stupid vehicle because now gravity- Oh, well, that might actually work. If you go on too much of a slant either way, gravity makes it much difficult to drop into the hole. Much more difficult to drop a block into the hole because you're tilted so it misses the hole sometimes. But we're gonna hit these trees here in a second, so you're probably wondering how do you turn? Well. These two switches represent um, each, the power on each side, so both of them are up right now, so that means both sides are going forward, but if I turn this switch off, then that means that this side will go forward, and that should turn us to the left. There we go. And yeah, we only go as long as this thing is being fed. That's the only way that we're gonna get any gas. As soon as it reaches the end of the conveyor belt, then we are done. All right, so now I'm gonna straighten ourselves out here, and I'm gonna actually gonna I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna keep it a little bit more. Now the weird thing about the physics, look at this. When I let go, when we're when we're going forward, you can see the block shoots back. So it seems like this game does not conserve momentum because technically it should go straight down since it's releasing from a moving point. It should stay with the moving point, but it doesn't do that, which is uh, not how physics works in real life. But you can see we're making some good distance now. I'm gonna turn to the right. There we go. Uh, doing the blocks while you're turning is a little bit more difficult. But this is working so far, and if for any reason you wanna stop even when the belt is being fed... Wait. Never mind, that doesn't work. Um, I, I hooked this up wrong, apparently. This was supposed to be the kill switch, but I hooked it up to the wrong stuff. Uh oh, we're tilted now. We're gonna see if we can get over this mountain. Oh boy, that's the thing about being tilted backwards, is it makes the conveyor belts also tilted more so that the blocks fall out really quick. So going uphill is probably one of the harder things to do. But, we made it over that little bump there, we're still going. And there's one thing I really, really, really like about this vehicle, which is also a drawback depending on how you look at it. I'm gonna show you in just a second, once we cover some more distance, then I'll be able to show you. We're gonna take a left here. Oh, straighten out. Oh, what? No, that's not straightening out. So you, what you just saw there was an accident, um, but if you want, you can go backwards. 
And the way that you go backwards is by hitting both switches down. So right now both switches are up. If I turn this one down, I go right. If I turn just this one down, I go left. But if I turn both of them down, you can see I go backwards. So yeah, I set up some logic to, to make that happen. But let's go forwards again. We're gonna go a little bit further forwards. Now I can't do the engines any faster than this because that effect of the blocks going back makes it much more, much more uh, extreme. So it's a lot more difficult to put blocks down while you're going faster. This seems to be the, the Goldilocks speed of getting somewhere and not screwing up when you're trying to keep these blocks going. So, here's my favorite part about this vehicle, is once you've gone somewhere, take a look at this, you have a little trail, it leaves a little trail of where you've gone, and this to me is like the funniest thing for some reason, I just think this is like, it, it, this is what makes the vehicle, wait, where's all of our, oh, here we go, we went, yeah, we went over this, over this hill, yeah, we just leave, we leave like a little rabbit trail of droppings, block droppings, because it eats the food and then it poops it out, and this is our, this is our vehicle droppings, so we actually have a vehicle that poops as it goes. Yeah, all the way back to where we started. So, um, that's the one thing about this vehicle, is it makes a mess of your world. An absolute mess the more you use it, and I haven't had too many issues with lag yet, but I'm assuming the more you use this thing, the farther you go, then the more laggy the world might get. But then again, maybe not, because once these things settle down, they're not actually going to be doing collision checks. So, it might not be too much of an issue, but it's definitely going to leave a lot of unnecessary debris. So if you're going to build other stuff in your world with this vehicle, then uh, you're definitely going to want to clean up, clean up after yourself. I should make like a pooper scooper vehicle to follow this thing. Um, but yeah, let's, let's take a look a little bit more of like what actually this vehicle is made up of and how it works. So because you have to be really, really high up there to uh, drop the blocks down on, onto the conveyor belt, I, I needed a way to get up. And I didn't want to obstruct any of the glass view, so I didn't want to build like a staircase that came down and blocked the glass. So I built this um, little elevator th elevator thing, and both of these switches go up and down, so you can just hit the switch, it brings you up, and then you go here. And so underneath here, the way it works is uh, the conveyor belt is lined with sensors, as you can see. And as long as any of these sensors are being triggered, then it triggers the, the engines on the wheels. And this technically isn't tank steering. You can see if I hit one of these switches, the wheels actually turn. So it's not, it's technically not the way I told you where one, one switch powers one side, one switch powers the other side. It's just set up to be like that. And here, the switch will uh, bring us back down. And we can go ahead back up. So yeah, huge thanks to uh, Superman for giving me this idea. Oh, there's something weird going on. As we went down a hill, oh wow, this thing is giving, this one little block is giving us so much, <laughs> so much uh, distance because it got stuck in there. Because as it, it, as it tilt down, then the conveyor belt tilts down, so it actually, it makes it more difficult for the blocks, the single blocks to get passed through. I ran into that issue when I was doing some testing, because I find single blocks are really, really hard to uh, to pass down a conveyor belt because the corner fits perfectly on the on the circular the circular edges making it just rotate in place. Here, I'll show you what I mean. So this is one of the issues I was running into when testing out the conveyor belt system is uh, this. I was like, all right, I just got to feed blocks into a conveyor belt, and as they travel down, it'll it'll feed the vehicle. But then I was realizing that this happens with the single blocks. So I had to put the conveyor belt on an angle, and what actually helps a lot is as the vehicle moves, that extra momentum actually helps the block move down the conveyor belt too as it's moving forward. So luckily this, this I didn't run into this issue too much unless we're going downhill. But it is kind of interesting how that works, isn't it? And I think for the same reason, that's also why when we do it with just, uh, with just one block, it goes a lot faster. Because the way those corners fit into the into the ridges, it makes it actually roll quicker down the uh, down the conveyor belt. Sometimes it got caught that time. We'll try this again. Yeah, there we go. See, it just rolled right down there. Whereas this one, whoops. Whereas this kind, yeah, that kind gets caught and then it actually goes slowly. So yeah. Did you get it right? Did you get number two right? If you got number two right, definitely hit that like button because uh, this one 
is not your average vehicle for sure. It's actually one of my one, one of my more one of my more proud uh, designs. So thanks a lot again, Superman, for uh, giving me this idea. And if you want to be part of the Discord and give me ideas for creations and stuff and uh, and things to do in the games that I play on the channel, then check the link down in the description below, and uh, you can participate there as well. And let me know what you thought of the vehicles. Which one was your favorite, the clapper or the clapper car or the um, what do I what do I call this thing, the nom car? These are both going to be on the workshop as well. So check the workshop. There will be a link in the description for that too. Hope you enjoyed this episode. This has been Scrapman, and I'll see you next time. Bye. Welcome to the end screen. Well, you'll probably click away before I get to tell you to subscribe for more fun. And if you really like me, but like not in a creepy way, support me on Patreon. Oh yeah, check out this awesome video I made over here. It's probably even better than this one. Or it might be worse, actually. But if you don't click it, I guess you'll never know.